Do you want a tech YouTuber to tell you what they think of the OnePlus 6 without it getting sent to them? Or without getting a dummy unit that can't do anything so they can't give you your real impressions? Then you've come to the right place because I'm not terribly excited and they didn't contact me so I can say whatever I want. If you like the OnePlus 6, probably should click away. You're probably not gonna enjoy this video. So without further ado, let's talk about the newest addition to the OnePlus lineup. It's seven, right? OnePlus six, okay. Sorry, that's just what happens when I Google search it and the Google Assistant's so smart. It told me seven anyway. So the core audience of the OnePlus market has always been about making phones that typically are aimed at being flagship killers. They always use that term where this phone has really good specs and is a pretty good deal for the price. The OnePlus six starts at $529, which is actually a little bit more than their last model, the OnePlus five and 5T, which were at 500, but $30 extra, it's not a big deal. But we've seen that mindset grow since the original OnePlus phone. You know, every single year they add a little bit more to the price because they're like, eh, it's not that much of a price increase. It's just funny how over time it kind of accumulates. The big change with this one is that it has a smaller chin at the bottom and a notch at the top. They did what everyone thought they were gonna do and they adopted a glass back, but surprisingly didn't include inductive charging. Now this is very confusing to me because I thought that was the whole reason smartphones added glass back. You know, we had a glass back with the iPhone 4 and a lot of people were complaining about the backs breaking on them. So that's when Apple switched to the aluminum backs on the iPhone 5, 5S, 6, 6S, and 7. The only reason I think they switched back to glass backs was because they thought they developed a form of glass that was strong enough that it could withstand a lot of drops. And on top of that, it enabled Apple to adopt wireless charging. When Samsung switched to glass backs, it was also to help with wireless charging. Same story with LG, of course. We have a lot of flagship smartphone makers that are adopting glass backs so they can adopt this new Qi standard. So it's very confusing to me when OnePlus says we want to have a glass back, but not for the same reason everyone else does. We just want our phone to come off and look the same as everyone else's, but maybe not have all those features. They claim it's for 5G gigabit networking. So because you have a glass back now, you'll be able to support 5G connections and get up to a gigabit down, which is really good considering their last phone had a hard time playing 1080p video. And by the way, 4G LTE can play 1080p Netflix just fine. You don't need a gigabit down to do that. But who doesn't like faster internet? I mean, when you download your two gigabyte Android update you get once a year, I'm sure it'll download very quickly. Believe me, I want gigabit download a lot. I really, really would take advantage of it, but definitely I can't really think of many uses on my phone where it would be super helpful. Other than I guess backing up things with cloud storage, maybe that goes faster, but I thought the OnePlus 6 was supposed to cater to budget users. Are budget users really going to pay top dollar for that 5G connection? I imagine it's not going to be cheap especially at introduction. I don't completely hate the OnePlus 6 though. It's not like it's a complete flop of a phone. I think it's impressive that with this price point, they were able to adopt the Snapdragon 845. This enables this camera to shoot 4K at 60, just like an iPhone 8, but for a much smaller price. I'm not sure if it's gonna stop you every five minutes, just like the Galaxy phones do, but I assume it will, given it's the same CPU. By the way, if you get the higher storage configurations that come in at 64, 128, or 256, you can also get eight gigs of RAM instead of six, but that definitely is going to drive the price up to a bit more like $600. But overall, that is a genuine compliment. I think it's impressive that a phone that costs $530 is capable of 4K at 60. But then that brings us to the camera, which I'm very confused by. They kind of adopted the same camera setup that they have on the OnePlus 5T with a bit of an improvement. You have two lenses with the same focal length. So they said, yes, we want a dual camera, but does that dual camera add a wide angle or does that dual camera add a telephoto? No, it's just another lens. They're both f one point seven, the difference is one is 20 megapixel and one is 16. And I'm like, well, if it's 20 and 16, but they're the same focal length, would it really be the end of the world if you just ditched the 16 one and just kept the 20 megapixel one? I mean, it's the same angle and it's the same aperture. It's the same focal length. For a company that seems to be skimming out on cheap features like inductive charging, you know, things we've had on the Nexus 6, which you can now buy for like $200, that has wireless charging. But this brand new 2018 smartphone, the OnePlus 6, now nah, we skimped out on that to save on price. So you skimp out on modern features like that to keep the prices down, but when it comes to the dual camera, you want to have two of the exact same aperture and focal length for the sake of it must help with the crispiness? Maybe, I'm not sure, but usually if both lenses have the same focal length and the same aperture and the only difference is the megapixels, I mean, why not just stick with the larger one and leave out the secondary one just to keep your prices a little bit lower? Thought that would be important to OnePlus, or if you are gonna have a dual camera, at least let it be a noticeable upgrade. Either 
having a ultra wide like the LG or a telephoto like an iPhone. Just an idea. I also find it funny how so many creators complained about the notch and about the glass back on the iPhone. Like, oh, it's so slippery. It's the slipperiest iPhone. It's very easy to fall out of your hands. But then OnePlus makes a glass back phone. They make a phone with a notch and everyone's like, oh, interesting. I'm fascinated that they chose this design choice. Suddenly it's not a bad thing. Now suddenly it's just a modernized 2018 look that we all critiqued a long time ago. It does still come with dash charge, which means that these OnePlus phones, like they always have, are going to charge very, very quickly. Still keeps around that headphone jack, which once again proves that OnePlus is a company that's pretty anti-wireless, despite adding Bluetooth 5.0 to this phone. No wireless charging and keeping around the headphone jack. So they're selling these headphones on their website that look very similar to another pair of Beats X headphones I've reviewed in the past, but it's fine because, you know, they're cheaper and the battery life's worth. Regardless, Oxygen OS, a lot of people seem to be okay with, even though everyone loves stock Android so much. This one's very similar to that, so good job OnePlus for not doing anything on a skin. Thank you. I'm sure face unlock is still just as fast as it was on the 5T, which is still very impressive. Another interesting part is on their website, they say it's water resistant, but they don't give it an IP rating. Is it IP67? Is it IP68? We really don't know. It just says it can take a couple of spills. It can take a little bit of water. Just don't go swimming with it. And we're like, what does that even mean? I'm gonna guess that means it's IP67, just like an iPhone is. And perhaps they didn't get it IP tested to save on money because OnePlus is trying to make this phone very, very budget. So they just didn't pay for a water resistance test. So we don't know if it's IP67, but I'm gonna guess that's what it is. Doesn't sound like there's any word of stereo speakers either. So you're still dealing with just one speaker at the bottom. And overall, like I said, this is not a terrible phone. It's just kind of what makes everyone go, eh. It is kind of confusing how narrow of a field OnePlus is shooting for, especially given the fact that you're catering towards budget users and yet you only have one size option at 6.28 inches. That's quite a large phone, even with a bezel-less design. So maybe if someone's out there who wants a budget phone and they don't want something that's over six inches, that is quite a large display, they don't really have an option with OnePlus to go with. I guess they could buy the older generations, but other companies are known for kind of doing two size variants. And a lot of people are already complaining that there's only one size for the iPhone 10. But I mean, like the Galaxy S8 and the regular size S9, they're a lot more manageable to hold. And they're getting a lot cheaper now because time goes by, carriers provide deals. I keep hearing a lot of people telling me they bought the Pixel 2 because it was $300 off or $200 off, making it much more of a budget phone. So now when you have companies that are specifically designing phones to be budget, it kind of is very confusing to the market as a whole because a lot of once previously premium phones are now becoming cheaper. A lot of people will just buy an older phone that used to be premium, but its price has been reduced. A lot of people now are paying for their phone on a monthly basis anyway. So I think that's why the iPhone 10 sold so well is because most people aren't spending a thousand dollars outright. They're paying for it monthly and that's a lot more manageable. And to find out that they could pay half as much monthly, but lose out on all the features they like about their premium Galaxy phones or iPhones, it's just not as interesting to people. Budget phones never really excite the masses. It's really just like, oh, so that's available, huh? Okay. So I try to find out what the difference is between a OnePlus 6 and the iPhone SE 2 because I get really excited for that budget phone. But I think it's because that's a lot smaller. That's a lot more manageable. And that's even rumored to start at like $400 or maybe even less. Whereas this is kind of expensive enough to be like, yeah, that is a quite full purchase. It's definitely a lot less of a purchase than a Galaxy or an iPhone, but OnePlus releases two smartphones a year. They released the OnePlus 5 and the 5T. Now we'll get the OnePlus 6 and likely the OnePlus 6T. And I'm sure that one will have inductive charging. They're saving those features for later. And the confusing thing about that is if you're a big fan of OnePlus and you buy every single OnePlus phone that comes out, you're buying phones that have less features than the current flagships, but since they release two phones a year, you'd be paying $1,000 a year for smartphones, which is actually no different than someone who just bought one iPhone 10 and used that phone for the rest of the year. I think OnePlus, when they release phones that are lacking on a lot of modern features that a lot of flagships have, they shouldn't release two phones a year because it kind of prohibits the fan base from getting ever excited. Like I said, if you're a fan out there that's buying it twice a year, you're paying the same price as someone who just buys a flagship once. So it's definitely got a lot of missing pieces to the puzzle. And I think they intentionally kind of have those holes there so that with the OnePlus 6T, they know exactly what to add. But I suppose if you're a fan of big phones with big displays, you don't mind the notch and you like shooting things at 4K at 60, but you don't want to pay too much, then great, you got something now. Go ahead and get the OnePlus 6 if you're into that. I don't completely despise OnePlus. I just thought that this release was just a little bit weird. We were expecting a couple more features than we actually got, but I suppose that's what everyone's saying. You get what you 
pay for. So let me know what you think of the OnePlus 6. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you planning on getting one? Let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.